Hello everybody, it's Chef Diane, and I'm so happy to be baking along with you today. Uh, it's been um, gr a great fall so far, and I've got a recipe that's gonna be fantastic for your Thanksgiving table. So I'm gonna let a few people check in, and we'll, then we'll go ahead and get started baking. But if you are already on this live video, go ahead and start with your hand washing. We always wanna start with nice, squeaky clean hands, and then anytime you touch anything, icky, sticky, ooey gooey, remember that you wanna wash again. And if you love baking, I also have a holiday treats mini series that I'm gonna be offering in November, and I'm gonna put a link down in the bottom of the comments here after, that you can check out after we do our cook along today. In case you'd like to learn some really yummy, delicious holiday treats, you can sign up for that. It's just three classes, and we'll be making things like holiday cookies, uh, New Year's monkey bread, a bark with chocolate and Oreos and peppermint that you can make and, and take as a gift. And also we'll be making a, um, hmm, it's our last one. The first one, we're gonna making uh, pumpkin whoopie pies, which would be great for Thanksgiving as well. So today what we're making are cheddar cheese straws. And so we're gonna grab our equipment, grab our ingredients, and then we can go ahead and start baking. So the number one ingredient that is gonna make these cheese straws easy and delicious is puff pastry. So I have my puff pastry here and I took it out of the refrigerator um, just so it's not hot warm, it's still a little bit cold. Now you want it to be a little bit cold because you want the butter to be um, holding that dough together. If it gets too soft, it's gonna start sticking to your counters, it'll be hard to work with. So if you're feeling your dough and it's feeling a little sticky, go ahead and put it back in the refrigerator and then um, we'll bring it out when we start actually rolling our cheese straws. You're gonna need cheddar cheese or any kind of hard cheese. So I'm using a mild cheddar cheese, you could use sharp, you could use Parmesan cheese if you like, um, any kind of uh, easy to grate hard cheddar cheese. Not a mozzarella, um, not a jack, those are just a little bit too soft. So you wanna look for really super firm, extra hard cheese. The next thing you'll need is one egg. We're just gonna use the yolk, so we'll crack that. Some flour, no measurement on the flour, it just as much as you need to keep things from sticking paprika and also in your recipe is cayenne pepper now i don't care for spicy cayenne pepper but if you would like to put yours on your it's just a tiny little pinch that you sprinkle all over we'll talk about that when we get there you can grab cayenne pepper there if you like a coarse ground salt this is a kosher salt and coarse black pepper and then for your equipment you'll need a rolling pin cheese grater two baking sheets I line mine with parchment, but if you don't have parchment, you can just give it some cookie spray, and um, that will keep things from sticking to it. A knife that fits your hand, and again, here's my second cookie sheet. It has my uh, puff pastry on it, so um, pretty easy stuff, really uh, straightforward. Another piece of equipment that we'll be using is the oven, so go ahead and heat your oven to 400 degrees right now. So we're gonna go ahead, turn on that oven, 400 degrees. That way I'll be ready to start baking as soon as we have these. As soon as we have these cheese straws ready to go. So let me, there we go. I have not lived in this house very long, so I'm still learning about all the equipment that's in it. Um, but now I've got my oven heated, heating to 400 degrees. So if you're hand washed, if you have all your ingredients out, let's get ready to get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start grating our cheese. So you're gonna use the large side of your box cutter, box grater. I would like to grate mine onto a plate or grate it onto a paper towel. One thing that's really important about baking is cleaning as you go, or else you can end up with a real mess on your hands. So flour everywhere, sticky stuff everywhere. So if you take a paper towel or a plate, you'll have it nice and neat. Hold onto the top of your grater nice and firm, and then you're just gonna grate. You need a six ounce block of cheese. If you already have grated cheese in a bag, that's fine. 
it just melts a little bit nicer when it's a block. Cheese that's grated in a bag has a little bit of a coating on it to keep it from melting and sticking together in the bag. So this block of cheese won't have any of that so everything can melt right down into your puff pastry. And puff pastry can be homemade, but when you're purchasing puff pastry, it makes things really easy. Just one thing I like to do anytime I'm purchasing something that's processed is I look at the label. So the things you wanna look for in a label of puff pastry is it doesn't have high fructose corn syrup or hydrogenated, hydrogenated fats. Those are the two things that make processed food that's not as good for you. So read your labels, go to more of the natural food stores. All right, so I have six ounces of cheese here. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to crack my egg. So I just need the yolk and a splash of water, and that's gonna make what's called an egg wash. So take your egg, tap, tap on the counter, tiny little crack, just put your thumbs inside that crack, and then open this up like a book. I'm gonna do the method where you take the shell and the yolk and you pass it from shell to shell. So then all you have is the yolk. Now I'm gonna throw away the white because I don't need it. I'll put my yolk in my bowl and then I'm just gonna turn on the water very, very low so I'm sure that I only get a splash. So just a tiny splash of water. And while you're there, since we touched an egg, let's wash our hands. After your yolk is in the bowl with a splash of water, we're just gonna mix it up using a pastry brush. So you should have a pastry brush, a little bowl, and you're just gonna mix, mix, mix. I didn't mention that on the equipment list, so if you haven't grabbed that, go ahead and grab that. Small bowl, pastry brush, give me any size, and then mix it up till your eggs look nice and foamy and mixed together. We're just gonna put that to the side. That's all our prep for this recipe. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get this puff pastry a little bit evened out. Now you might have one piece of puff pastry in your package or you might have two. I have two and what we, we're gonna ultimately end up with is two pieces of puff pastry. So I'm gonna take my flour, just a little sprinkle of flour. So I probably put about two teaspoons of flour on the my countertop. I have my countertops are nice and clean so nothing is going to get into my puff pastry little bit of flour, I'm gonna spread it around, and I don't wanna to put too much flour or else my cheese straws are gonna taste really floury, cakey. And then I'm gonna lift my puff pastry, place it on the floured surface, grab my rolling pin, and then put a little bit of flour on the rolling pin too. I do it by like this, I put it in my hand, and then I just rub it around on the rolling pin. And the one that was in my hand was probably just a half of a teaspoon. Just enough so it doesn't stick to my puff pastry. Now I'm gonna roll this out just so it's nice and even and the lines that were on it disappear. So you can see how I have lines that are here because it was folded in the package. I'm just gonna roll it enough. Now take a second just to lift it and if it feels like it's sticking to the countertop, give it a little bit more flour. We're not making this much thinner. We're just making it a nice shape. Now, if you have a long rectangular single piece of puff pastry, just roll it out and then you're gonna cut it in half. So you take that, so let me show you. If you have the full piece of puff pastry, it would be like this, a nice long rectangle and you just cut it in half. 
so you'd have two pieces. But mine's already cut, and yours might as be as well. My second one, again, a little bit of flour on the countertop. The puff pastry is really easy to work with. Just don't um, be very gentle with your fingertips. Like you have soft little kitten paws. And then we're going to just roll this out a little bit. A bit. So the same shape, same size. All right, so here's where we start to put the pastry dough together to make our cheese straws. You're gonna grab your cheese, or I'm sorry, you're gonna grab your egg. This is called the egg wash, and you're just gonna very thinly wash the puff pastry. This is gonna act like a glue. It's gonna act like a browning agent. So a nice thin all the way from edge to edge. Take your time with it. I'll give you a little bit of a chance to catch up, but you're gonna wanna just have it be completely washed. You see it's nice and shiny. We'll just do the first one. Don't do the second one yet. So as soon as you're ready, as soon as your egg is covering your puff pastry, the one piece of puff pastry, you're gonna grab half of your cheese. So I have this big mountain of cheese. I'm gonna take my mountain of cheese and just eyeball half of it. So it's gonna be karate chop right down the middle. It's gonna be where my half is. And I'm gonna take this cheese and I'm gonna sprinkle it all over the puff pastry and the egg. And again, corner to corner. Don't be shy with that cheese. And evenly distributed. So there's half of our cheese. Now we're gonna give this some flavor. Just making sure that it's all even. You can press it down a little bit with your hands. And we're gonna give some flavor. So the flavors that we're using for these cheese straws today, salt, pepper, and paprika, a little bit of cayenne pepper, if you like the spice. All you have to do with your salt is put a pinch in your hand about that much. That's about a quarter of a teaspoon. And you're gonna sprinkle it all over. Like you're putting snow on top of a mountain. Nice and even. If you don't have kosher salt, you could use sea salt. So there's our salt. Then we're gonna take a pepper mill, ground pepper and evenly pepper over the cheese. Now, depending on how your grinder on your pepper mill is, I've probably done about 25 grinds, but you might have to get more pepper coming out. Just eyeball it. So it's just like a little sprinkle, just like a little powder of snow on top of a mountain. And then we're gonna do paprika. So again, I'm gonna put a little bit in my hand, about a quarter of a teaspoon. And there's measurements on the recipe. I think it's a half of a teaspoon or one teaspoon of paprika total. But I'm gonna eyeball it. I'm looking for color, even distribution. Just gonna make sure that it's all the way even. Now this paprika is gonna give it a nice flavor and also a beautiful color. A little bit more. Beautiful. Now, if you wanted, you could put some other spices and flavor in here. You could put some garlic powder if you like, or some sesame seeds, or everything bagel topping. 
there's so many different options that you could do. Just like the cheeses, you could change around. You could also change what your toppers are. Now that we have cheese on our bottom layer and our spices, we're gonna take the top layer and put it on top of this and just make sure the edges all line up. Now you cut it in half evenly. So it should have the same size for each puff pastry portion if, you came, if yours came with just one big one. After you have that placed on top, take your egg wash, brush it from corner to corner. Not too goopy. It's like painting. Just a light wash. If you run out of egg, just try and get a little bit from another section of the pastry. <laughs> right now my kitten is chasing moths and scaring my dog. So I have a lot going on over here right now. Okay, second portion of cheese goes on top of that egg wash. If you haven't gotten your whole pastry washed yet, that's okay. Take your time. I like this kind of baking because it's very easy and not a whole lot of measuring. I put more cheese on the bottom layer than I did on the top, but I'm just gonna gently use my fingers to distribute it around. After you're done with your cheese, it's time to season it up. So just another pinch of salt, about that much. Sprinkle it evenly. I take my fingers and I work them like this to try and get that even sprinkle. And if you took more salt than you need, just go ahead and put it back. Don't put everything on there if you don't need it. Grab your pepper mill. Let's count. I'm gonna do two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, so I did about 20, about 20 grinds of pepper on top. You just want that coarse ground pepper because it makes it look really pretty. And then I'm going to use my colorful paprika. You could use smoked paprika if you like. You could use onion powder. All different kinds of ways you can make these fancy, make them your own. You're going to feel so proud to make this for the Thanksgiving table for your friends and family. And I'll give you a second to get your cheese and your spices evenly distributed. This is what your product is gonna look like. I've got Dorina watching. Hello, Dorina, I miss you. And Millie, hi Millie. Dorina, today we're making cheddar cheese straws. So I'm using puff pastry, grated cheddar cheese, paprika, salt and pepper, and you just put an egg wash on the puff pastry, all of the cheese, and the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start getting the straws ready, and they're gonna go on a baking sheet at 400 degrees in your oven. So to make the straws, you're gonna put a little bit more flour in your hand. Rub your hands together and rub it on your rolling pin. You're gonna roll the cheese into the puff pastry. So yes, you might have a few pieces of cheese sticking to your rolling pin, but this is gonna make it all stick into the puff pastry, super cheesy. So about five rolls up and down and you're gonna have your dough that looks like this. Now we're gonna cut straws 
the short side. So you don't want to do the long side because then they're going to get really hard to work with. I'm going to cut the short side. And they're going to be about a half of an inch thick. So I have a knife that fits my hand. I'm going straight down, grabbing my prepared pan. You have your parchment paper or you've did some kind of cooking spray or a little bit of olive oil that you spread over it. And then you're gonna grab your cheese straw and you're gonna twist it. Now this is fun to do if you have somebody to do it with. One person holds one side of the cheese straw, the other person holds the other side. So you're gonna twist it so it looks like this. Now if little pieces of cheese are falling off, that's fine. They're gonna bake on the baking sheet and they're actually quite delicious to snack on. So just about five twists, not too tight. If you do it too tight, then the puff pastry might start falling apart. And they're gonna go on a baking sheet just like this. Now, if you have had cheese straws before, they sell them in bakeries and they're, they're so delicious, but just imagine how these are gonna be so good, homemade, fresh. So just keep cutting through. You should get about 12 cheese straws. Anyway, I'm a little tongue tied today. Cheese straws, pick them up, twist opposite directions. That was five twists. If it gets too long for your baking sheet, just kind of tuck it in a little bit. They're so easy to make and twist. Kind of look like pizzas a little bit. That'd be delicious if you did some kind of pizza topping. Oregano, basil. If you haven't turned on your oven, make sure that you heat it to 400 before these go into the oven. And just keep on picking them up and twisting them. If you have pieces of cheese that fall on the counter, you can just pick them up and sprinkle them on top of your straws. So I have four so far. Oops, I didn't cut it all the way through. If they start to not stick together, just give them a press where you can get your rolling pin back. We used to do these in kids camp and they were always really popular, especially if they're because they're fun to make with a friend. Make sure you don't crowd them on your pan. You wanna make sure they have a little bit of space in between. That will help them get enough air to make them crispy, brown. Half an inch, twist it up. Now, one thing that I really love is when you make a dish and then you show a picture and post it on the Facebook kids cook along post. So I'm only gonna get one, two, three, four, five, six on this baking sheet and I'm gonna pop it into the oven. These go for about 18 to 20 minutes. And I'm gonna get my next sheet. If you don't have a sheet pan ready to go, then you can take these out of the oven and use that sheet pan for your next round. Hi, Tiffany. Oh, they're gonna be so yummy. So happy to see you. All these videos are available live on our Facebook group. I'm also on YouTube. Kids Cook Along with Chef Diane is the name of my channel. I would love it if you liked and subscribed to my videos. <laughs> oh, 
All right, so I've got, I'm gonna mix one, two, three, four, five. This is gonna make five more. So I'm gonna have 11 total. You might have more or less, depending on how thick you cut yours or how big your puff pastry was. Some of my favorite places to get puff pastry, Whole Foods has good organic puff pastry options. Trader Joe's has really good puff pastry. And you can use puff pastry for so many things. You can make strawberry Napoleons. You can make a tart, baked brie inside of a puff pastry. How is everyone's looking? Mine are almost done. You see my crazy cat back there? His name is Dali. He has a little mustache. I have some cheese on my counter, so I'm just gonna sprinkle it over the top of these cheese straws. And then these go in. So again, about 18 to 20 minutes. But I'm gonna set my timer so I can check them halfway through. So in about 10 minutes, I'm gonna check them. Then I'm gonna take the pans and I'm gonna rotate them in the opposite side. That helps them bake more evenly. Your oven might have a hot spot on the top and cooler on the bottom. Every oven is different. So let me set my timer for 10 minutes. Then I'm gonna check them, rotate them. But right now, while I'm waiting for them to bake, I am gonna clean as I go. So your parents are gonna love it if you clean along as well. I'm gonna show you what I like to use when I'm baking to clean. It's called a bench scraper. So you take the bench scraper and you just scrape all the ingredients that are on the counter, the flour, the cheese that fell out. You scrape it into a little pile. And then grab your trash can or you can use a plate or a baking sheet and you scrape it right into a place where you can throw it away. Then of course you're gonna get some sanitizer, wipe down your counters, and you're gonna be ready to go for taking your cheese straws out, put them on the counter, let them cool. Now since these are gonna take 20 minutes, I'm gonna check out now, but I'm going to post a picture of what mine looks like in the comments below. I'm also gonna post in the comments below information about my holiday treats mini series three different classes they're about an hour and 15 minutes long and you'll learn how to make a bunch of different yummy holiday treats one is even great for a gift and um so let me see i'm just going to check my comments see if i have any questions um tiffany can't wait to make this it'd be great for thanksgiving tiffany the girls will make it they'll be so proud of what um they made e i can't wait to see when you cook them please take a picture i want to see it um, don't forget my holiday treats mini series. I'd love to cook along with you, bake along with you. Um, I'm going to post my cheddar cheese straws as soon as they're done. Thank you so much for cooking along with me today. I can't wait to see you soon. Bye-bye.